Welcome everybody to the 650 kilometer review of the KS16X. And one thing I can tell you, off-road, this thing is an absolute This thing is an absolute beast. If you haven't seen it already, you can go and check out our Winter Madness video we did where I was riding this very machine through some of the muddiest environments you could even imagine. And despite it not really being made to do that sort of thing, it handled really, really well. Now, I had to ride that day not coming off this because when we're using these as tests for you guys to see if we get any issues up to a thousand kilometers, obviously we want to treat them as best as possible. So throwing them off cliff edges and stuff like that is not ideal. Glad to report, I didn't come off it during the day. Um, so it was quite good really, despite the terrible conditions. Handled really, really well. It's not an 18 inch wheel, is it? An 18 inch wheel, so the bigger the wheel diameter, typically the easier they are off road, well, until you get to the monster type stuff, because uh, they're a bit too big and heavy. But an 18 inch wheel, 19 inch, tends to be the sweet spot for a lot of off roading. Uh, the potholes become smaller, the bigger the wheel gets and the bumps do, but this handled really, really well. So nice and torquey. The tire being a mix for a mixture, essentially road and off-road has handled really, really well. It's not wearing down at all. It's, it's remained the same as you'd expect at 650 kilometers. These tires will do usually a, sort of a couple of thousand miles right until you start thinking you need to replace that, but they still keep on going after that if you want to run with no tread. Uh, but it's still really, really nice. It grips into the corners. The tread runs right up to where You've got like a crescent shape. It actually runs right to the edge. So as you're leaning into a corner, especially on mud, it does dig in and grip as you go. And so as long as you're not accelerating out, accelerating out of that corner, it grips like a good one. So that has sort of performed really, really well. There's not loads of road noise either, considering it's quite an aggressive pattern. You don't get loads of road noise. It's very comfortable on the road. So noise and comfort levels of the tire is really, really good. Mug guard is very, very good. Uh, but as you can see, there's a splash up here up the back of the machine. Now that's an overspray essentially. So you tend to get an overspray at speed. Um, and you'll also spot, just worth quickly noting, the tape. That is because when you put this behind your seat of your car or whatever, that mug guard, it creases up. So it folds over and then it split the nice reflective strip off. That is no biggie, but it's just worth mentioning. But there's also a plus to mention at the same time, despite this mug guard being bent either way, up and down occasionally, as you can see, there's no marks, there's no cracks, nothing. It's a nice flexible rubber material that actually has held up to it perfectly fine. So the overspray runs up fairly high, but it's not a mega amount, considering this has not been cleaned since Winter Madness. It's just spot on, really. You'd expect that. So you do get a little bit on your trousers. The issue with that is increases with speed. So you get a little bit more overspray. This is from riding at speed. So probably about 20, 25 miles an hour. That's the overspray from that. So in these sorts of conditions, you're probably gonna be wearing winter trousers anyway, waterproof trousers. Let's be honest, you're not gonna be riding around in your suit in terrible weather that produces results like that at the back. So overall, mug guard has been spot on. There's a, like the monster that I'm testing at the moment, V3, has got no mud guard. And what a pain that is. You need to get a 3D printed one, really. But riding as standard at the box, you get covered. There's no way around it. So a mud guard like this, which is actually flexible and not a fixed mud guard in terms of solid, is a bit of a godsend because you can it bends, so it flattens in. Good. The lip on the front here, being rubber, that, as you can see all the dirt falling out, that has, that's been brilliant. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, so otherwise, if that was of this material, that would be really scratched up. The number of times it's been in the car, it's fallen forward. Um, and you've also got a raised lip around the light unit as well, which has saved it from getting scratched completely. So that design is, although small, if you started out with this wheel, you would never appreciate these little design functions, essentially, because they are functional. So the rubber flap there has got a bit of an out, sort of a, a knobble on there that you can makes it easier for opening up and down. Um, but not only that, of course, it also levels off with that. So if it does fall forward, it hits that. It doesn't damage the port. That has remained waterproof. There's no rust. You would get rust in there if there was water had got in. So I've seen that on other wheels where you get little spots of rust, which doesn't really matter. But that shows that this, as long as it's put in properly, 
it's a little bit fiddly to get it in. Same with the charge port cover on the back. Getting that in can be a little bit like you have to go around the houses to actually get it in. But this is a minor gripe I'm talking about. Trolley handle, as long as you're pushing the center button, has remained spot on. No issues there whatsoever. The pickup ratio, so it actually stopping when you pick it up, has been 100%. I've never had it where I've picked this up and the wheel's carried on spinning because it thinks it's not been lifted it, every single time it's worked. So they've nailed that, which is really, really good. Now this has to be one of the most efficient wheels I've ridden for the battery capacity and motor size. So with this, if you're riding at a slightly slower speed, it's so efficient with the way it uses the energy that it's got. So that's great from that point of view. That's really, really good. The design on the side, the rubber padding as it were, this part here where your, the top part of your leg hits, that's softer than these other bits. But these other bits add, add sort of act as a, as a side cover almost. Obviously you're not protected here, but if you do knock something as you go and buy it, which is quite common, so if you've got stuff sticking out or curbs and things like that, it knocks here and it runs all the way down. So it protects this whole side and it's part of the design. It's not an add-on. It actually works really, really well. So from those point of view, really good. Front light has proven to be excellent. So really bright, nice broad beam across the whole path in front of you, which is nice. I find, and this is almost with all wheels until they come up with another design of an auto tilting light, is that it does tend to, it's so bright that it can actually blind people in front kind of thing it's quite bright no one's actually complained but i've seen someone else riding this and coming towards me riding it back after having to go on it and i like, can't see a thing and you get that with cyclists they're coming towards you the light's so bright that it's sort of it's a bit overbearing but in terms of being safe to ride at night time spot on and the way that it also dims down when you stand still if you haven't seen it go and check our instagram account go and follow us on there because i did a video of that showing you how cool that was so if you've missed it then you need to be following us on Instagram. Auto dimming is spot on for that. So you stand still having a chat with someone, it goes, ooh, and just dims down a little bit. You can turn that off within the app. So I don't use the app much. I do it to check the mileage basically on the machine, but you can fiddle about with some of the settings. The rear brake lights, nice and strong. They're slightly off the back, so they actually stay fairly clean, as clean as they can for being so low down. Foot plates, excellent, really, really grippy nice and wide, nice and big. Don't get hardly any foot ache at all. This thing looks, I think, really pleasing to the eye. A great choice to the fake carbon fiber look. That's a, that's a definitely a thumbs up, but the shield shape of the whole thing adds to it as well. So I think that's really cool. Um, and it's just been really, really durable. Again, with most of the wheels we tested, no, don't get any issues with them. They work really well out of the box. So it's come a long way from a few years back. Talking about the foot plates, we actually do, if you're doing a lot of off-roading, we do, it's in the plug for another product, but you can actually replace the top part of these foot plates with, with these, which we've got on the website now. So go and check them out. There'll be a link up above to these, but they're essentially a direct replacement. I can't fold that all the way down, but they sit on top. It's a direct replacement. They come with all the fittings and your magnets and things like that, and some spare studs. But they have got studs threaded in them. Um, so it's an Allen key fitting. I think, does it come with an Allen key? I think it probably does. If it doesn't, it's just a standard Allen key. It does tell you what you need in there. But it's got spare ones, don't think it comes with an Allen key now. I think it tells you the toolish you need. Tool, oh, no, tools required. So two millimeter uh, Allen wrench, 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, blue Loctite alcohol for cleaning not because you're fed up or anything like that when you're trying to fit them. Paper towels and clear packaging tape. And so there's a whole set of instructions in there, but this will glue your foot to this really, really well. Now I haven't had any issues with grip at all. So in winter madness, I just wore standard Skecher shoes, which are pretty trash trainers I've got for those sorts of events and I didn't slip off once. But if you were putting your foot down loads all the time, you're picking up and putting mud onto these foot plates, this, will get you around that problem. So if you've got a whole day of going through huge trails, then that's gonna be that's gonna be the one for you. So it's worth checking them out. Have a look at them, see what you think. It could be for you, it might not be. It's not a necessity, because I've found, not found these slippers, I say, so yeah. So in terms of carrying it, the weight is not way up there where it's just too heavy for you. You wouldn't wanna carry it very far, but I'm carrying it up two flights of stairs uh, when I come into work, and there's no issue at all carrying it up there. 
Just make sure the foot plates are closed up before you pick it up so you don't smash a shin into it. I mean, who would do that? But carrying it, fine, fits behind my car seat, no problem at all. The motor is nice and quiet as well. So we're on the roads and you're doing 15, 20 miles an hour, chunneling along, nice and quiet motor. So that's pleasant, basically. So a ride that's quite nice. Never any dogs chasing me, anything, anything like that, anything crazy like that. And the, the way it's delivered, because it's a 16 inch wheel, slightly bigger because of the tire, but it's a 16 inch. The, the torque is a nice delivery of power. So it's pretty torquey in comparison to the bigger wheels. So off the mark, it's nice and snappy, which is pretty sweet. Again, the way that that handles can be adjusted in the app, different rider modes and different settings you can have. Uh, I found the sounds for the warning sounds to warn you of a low battery or you're going too fast, which I've not really do on this one because I don't go flat out everywhere because that's just mental and you're gonna end up getting injured or worse still, injure someone else if it goes off out of control after you come out off it. Um, so, but the low batteries and things like that, those warnings are nice and audible, even with a helmet on, nice and loud. Uh, you've got the horn function as well, which you can use through the app to honk the horn, uh, turn the light on and off, all those sorts of things. All the sounds for that, they work really well. It's a nice and powerful speaker system in this. And so if you can, you can play music over it as well, of course, we went through that before, which is something else I don't really condone, because unless you're in the middle of nowhere on your own, not annoying anyone. Uh, double charge port, spot on, that is really, really good. Um, so you can charge it at twice the speed, although that's still quite slow. You can actually charge it at twice the speed. So yeah, that's that's worth noting as well. So no issues whatsoever with this wheel. Gonna carry on now until we hit the thousand kilometer mark. Um, and what we do is for the patrons that support this channel, they get uh, first dibs on the wheel and they get slightly cheaper than it would go online. So they get a two week heads up of a wheel we got for sale um, and it'll be slightly cheaper as well. So the first dibs goes to the patrons. So this will go up on after within a thousand kilometer review, done the video for it. Sadly, I have to say, this will be going up for sale. And the reason for that, as many of you know, you can't keep stacking up these wheels and have them forever. So you test, we got a Monster V3 and it's a two and a half gram machine. We got this two gram machine. You can't have that many wheels. So we have to sell them off after we finish. So we do a thousand kilometers uh, to fully test them, make sure they're A-OK -okay and give you the confidence that's the idea, we're trying to inform you before you make your purchase that you know that your money's well spent and well placed in a wheel that will last you a good amount of time. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful, please like it and share it importantly. If you haven't already, hit the bell notification to get notified when we upload new videos. So if you want to see the thousand kilometer review video, hit the bell notification, you'll get notified when it gets uploaded. And of course, all the other videos we do around other wheels. So share this on the forums, spread it around, get the news out there. Um, but yeah, so far, I hope that update has been helpful, answer some questions you might have had about it, and uh, we'll see you on the 1,000 kilometer review.